Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. I'm battling a cold this week so I'm not going to let that stop me but bear with me if I have to grab some water have some sniffles there but Anyway, this is an introduction to Lambda expressions. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com, select begin, and scroll all the way down here to Lambda expressions introduction. Every time I think of the word Lambda, certain scenes from the movie Revenge of the Nerds just pop right into my head. Lambda expressions are now a part of Java as of version 8, and they are super useful. At first glance, they look like some sort of formula for an interstellar time travel, but in reality, they are pretty straightforward. Stick with this tutorial, and by the end, you will have a brand new tool in your Java arsenal. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about what a functional interface is here. So the first step in understanding Lambda expressions is to learn what a functional interface is. The rule for a functional interface is simple. It must contain a single abstract method. One, and only one, abstract method defines a functional interface. On a side note, optionally, a functional interface can contain static and or default methods. But, one, and only one, abstract method. A simple example of a functional interface looks like this. Got your interface keyword, the name of your interface, your interface body. Right here. And then I've got this single method in here with an int return type. Name is a mystery method and takes a single parameter of type int. Now, all uh, this is implicitly abstract, right? As are all methods in <coughs> interfaces. Unless, of course, they're marked static or default, right? Those, uh, but any this is an abstract method it's implicitly abstract we could type in abstract in front of that there but just you know just a little refresher on that on interfaces there so that is what a functional interface is a single abstract method now let's talk about the lambda operator which is basically uh the lambda operator is basically a dash followed by a greater than sign right and that's that's all there is to the lambda operator you'll have some stuff to the left of it and stuff to the right of it Okay, now that we have created a functional interface, we will declare a reference variable of type functional interface, right? So, in this statement here, I'm declaring functional interface type, and then a reference variable fi. Okay, now I'm going to create a lambda expression to multiply a value by 3. Okay, so we've got a reference variable fi, and we're using our assignment operator equals. And then inside of these parentheses over here, got the uh, a variable x then we get our lambda expression and then on the right we have x times 3 and that makes up our whole entire statement there okay now the statement above may appear confusing so bear with me for just a bit let's invoke the mystery method now with an argument of 5 okay so I am I am um, initializing an int variable i equal to 0 and I'm assigning e i the result of invoking the mystery method passing at the argument of 5 right and if we display I to the console there we are going to get number 15 okay all right so if you're confused you should be I'll try to clear it all up and then we'll go into source code and I'll clear it up even more so now the result is 15 that's cool but what happened and we're gonna let's break this down backwards okay the one and only abstract method and mystery oh uh, sorry the one and only abstract method mystery method in the functional interface interface has a method return type of int right here's our method return type of int so when we invoke this right that will match the return type so that is why the variable i can be assigned the result all right now, in the portion to the left of the lambda operator, right, which is this right here, the x will be the argument passed to the mystery method in x parameter list, right? So whatever goes in here, right, that will essentially get passed into here, okay? All right. Now, the x times 3, which is on the right side 
the lambda operator. Here's the lambda op operator right here, right? This is the right side, x times three. The x times three becomes the on the fly method body for the mystery method, and the return value is implicitly the result of the expression. Okay, and that's what this will be right here. So when you put the whole thing together, our virtual mystery method created with a lambda expression is essentially this, right? Int mystery method int x return x times three. It's essentially what all this does here. So you should be a little confused right now. I'm gonna go ahead and go through some source code here with you and then this will make perfect sense after that. So let's come down here, highlight, uh, highlight all this stuff, control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm gonna move my browser off screen here. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, type in CMD next and finish. First thing we'll do when we open it up is type in Java C, which is the Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You'll make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash. CD is short for uh, change directory backslash tells it to go through. I'm gonna make a directory with the MD command called Java. And I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. Change directories to the Java folder. I'm gonna make a directory here called uh, uh, Lambda intro. I'm a notepad, lambda intro.java. That'll be the name of my source code file. Okay, let's go ahead and paste this stuff in here. All right, let's save this out. Okay, so in here I've got a couple interfaces and a single class. Of course, the interface right here, functional interface, is exactly what I just talked about there with the mystery method method that returns an int data type and takes in a single int parameter there. Now up here in the main method here, the first thing I'm going to do is exactly what we talked about, functional interface fi, and then fi equals, and then here's our, our lambda expression here, right? And then I'm going to be initializing i equal to zero and setting i equal to the result of invoking the mystery method here, passing it the argument of five, okay? And then I'll display that to the console, and then I'll invoke it with 38. Now before I go on down here, let's go ahead and save this and run it here. Let's clear our screen. All right. So we'll look at the first two results here. So the result here of invoking the mystery method, we got 15, right? And then passing it in 38. I just, I just did the int i right here, this little bit here, just to show you that you know the result is actually an int data type, but we don't really need to do that if we're just gonna invoke the method right in the print line method there, right? And so, passing it 38 times um, three is 114. Okay, so let's take a another look at this here. A functional interface, basically this method is, is really, the abstract method is really, really simple. Um, we're going to be returning an int data type and we're going to be getting an int data type. That's all we're going to be doing. Whatever we do with this, we can do it on the fly with the, um, by creating a, a lambda expression here. So the next statement I'm going to do, I'm still using the reference variable to the functional interface. None of that's going to change but I'm gonna assign it to another lambda expression right on the fly here, okay? So instead of multiplying x times three, I'm gonna say, okay, x minus seven, right? So x will essentially represent what I'm gonna pass in as the argument there, right? And then that will basically come in right here as the parameter there. Now this x minus seven essentially becomes the body right like if if this was an abstract it would have you know return x minus seven you can't do that in an interface there unless it's static or default but anyway that's essentially what that does right there okay just on the fly all right so take a look at the next one down there so when i pass it five this time after after assigning this to a whole new lambda expression based on the on the interface there right and this method, the single method, single abstract method there, that's what we end up with there. So essentially, 
Of course, 5 minus 7 is negative 2. All right, so let's take it up to the next level here with another interface here. Um, I made another interface down here called another one, and it has another abstract method, a single abstract method, right? Hence, this is a functional interface. So it has an int return type, and I got this one method called do things, and it will take two parameters in x and y, right? So now, using this particular abstract method, we can go ahead and um, do some cool things. So now I'm going to create um, a reference variable AO of another one interface type, right? And I'm just going to, I'm doing this all in one line now instead of breaking it apart there. So I'm gonna set that equal to, right? Um, this particular abs or lambda expression right here. We are going to be taking in X and Y and those are going to be basically the arguments or parameters or whatever you want to call them there, but they're going to be coming in right through here. And these variable names, these don't have to match at all. This could be A and this could be B, right? Um, that, that doesn't even matter. I just chose like a little consistency here because what does matter is that the variable names are up here are the same. If you were to put in like A and B here, that would not work. That would not work good at all. Um, it really doesn't matter what the name of the variable is in your abstract method here. As a matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and do this as A and B just to, to show you that. All right, let's come up here and save this. What does matter is that um, basically these are going to be int data types coming in. And in the first one, what I'm going to do is I've set the, the expression to evaluate here as x times y. So it'll return the result of x times y. So when I invoke do things, right, it'll take this parameter. Right? I'm putting 20 in as an argument and 5 in as an argument. And it'll take 20 and convert it to this parameter and the argument 5 and convert it to this parameter. And then it will basically invoke this particular like or run this, execute this expression here, and the return result will essentially be put, you know, to the print line method there, display that. So uh, let's come up here and save that since I did make those modifications. I'm going to clear the screen. We'll go ahead and type Java C and then let's run it again. Okay, so now in the first one here, right? <clears throat> 5 times 20, 100. So that works out good. And then on the next uh, next statement down here, okay, so the next one will be x divided by y. So 20 divided by 5, right? That comes out to 4. And now I'm modifying um, this with a new lambda expression, setting this functional interface, or yeah, setting the method, changing what the, basically the return value of this method is on the fly to x plus y, we get 25. And then the last thing I'm doing here is is um, basically setting the reference variable equal to you know this particular method that the reference variable has um, equal to this lambda expression right here x minus y so 20 minus 5 15. all right so i'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this get rid of this and leave you guys with a couple final thoughts there so Functional interfaces are an essential component of Lambda expressions. A functional interface contains one and only one abstract method. Now, in the uh, next few tutorials, I think we'll probably maybe about four or five tutorials will be over Lambda expressions there. So, and then, uh, and then get you guys going up and going on that and some of the cool things that they do. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.